Welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my shop. You spend any amount of time working with hand tools and you develop what I like to call the hand tool sense. Now this is nothing supernatural where you become one with the wood and you can speak to its inner spirit voice. What I like to think is that you use all of your senses besides just sight to make sure that your tools are working properly and efficiently and you are working with those tools the most precise and accurate way you can. Now this isn't necessarily solely the domain of hand tools. The same thing can apply in some part with power tools and I'm sure you've all experienced this. So with power tools, you do your setup, you fire the machine up and then you push the wood over the spinny pointy bits. But if you hear that motor start to bog down, it's usually a sign that you're pushing it too hard or something's going wrong. You can a lot of times hear when the wood starts to tear uh, or when the vibration picks up on, on a piece of wood. Now that can be a little bit hard to pick up sometimes over the vibration of just the spinning blade, but you start to tune in to that sense, that, that, that innate sense that something's going wrong with the wood. You can't deny the fact that when a cut goes smoothly and well, it sounds different than when a cut goes horribly wrong. Think about the sound that a router bit makes when you're routing out a groove and maybe you deviate from that groove and you start to cut a heavier amount of wood. It definitely makes a different sound and it feels a lot differently as well. The problem with this power tool sense is generally once you feel that change in vibration or that change in pitch, it might be a little bit too late and you've already caused irreparable harm to the work. The hand tool sense allows you to very quickly react, change or respond to that without causing a huge you know, mistake that can't be corrected. It also is going to take some of that uncertainty out of hand tool work. There's no real fence that you can set. There's no perfect linear motion that you get with working with a lot of power tools. So we're relying upon our own body and our own kind of body mechanics to saw perfectly square and perfectly plumb, to plane perfectly flat, to chisel perfectly flat and square. This can scare a lot of people. I think if you become more in tune to the hand tool sense, you'll find that you'll know when you're working out of square or you're causing some tear out or you're creating a surface that isn't exactly what you want. Being in tune with that hand tool sense means you can rely on something other than your eyes to tell you how the plane is cutting or how the wood is cutting. What I want to do today is show you a little bit about the hand tool sense. Let's look at our other senses and how we can tune into them to become better hand tool woodworkers. The sound of the blade as you work across a board will tell you a lot about the topography of it. For instance, I have a cup here so I can hear the plane cut as it enters the board, no cut in the middle and a cut on the far side. And as it levels, I start to hear the sound of a complete pass. So I'll work until I hear that complete pass all the way across the board. And I know at that point that I am flat across the direction that I've been planing. I can do the same thing by flipping lengthwise. And I can very clearly hear a cut down here and a cut down here. So I have a bow. Paying very close attention to the sound of the cut will tell you that the board is flat without even taking a straight edge to it. Listening to the sound of your saw as you make a rip cut or a cross cut will tell you a lot about whether or not you're sawing square and especially plumb. As I bring the saw back up, it should run smooth without any kind of rattle or vibration.
If I saw out of plum, you'll hear a very distinctive rattle sound as the, the saw is brought up out of plum, it increases the vibration and it continues to rattle even harder as it comes near the top, near the toe. That's always an indication that you're sawing a little bit out of square or more likely out of vertical, out of plumb. If I ever hear that, it's usually an indication that I need to move to my left because generally my body tends to drift away from the cut and pulls it out of plumb this way. That rattle tells me that I've, I've gotten lazy and I've kind of slipped out of my body mechanics. A saw cutting perfectly straight, exactly what, like you want it, shouldn't make any rattle on the backstroke. Another cause of that rattle can be dragging your teeth through the wood as you pull up. As you drag, if you drag your teeth back over the wood, all that's going to do is unnecessarily dull your teeth. You want to listen. That backstroke should be very quiet. And if you start to hear a lot of noise in that backstroke, that's an indication that you need to adjust your body mechanics and change what you're doing. When you're chiseling, that's another area where sound can really be useful, especially when you're working with a mallet and you don't have the kind of tactile feedback that you get with just pairing with hand pressure. Listen to how the pitch will change as I get to the bottom of this dovetail. That change in pitch tells me I'm at the bottom and I need to stop chiseling. There's a little bit of tactile feedback there as well because obviously that change in pitch denotes more solid material and you'll feel it through the hammer. Paying close attention to the sound of your planes will help you determine if you need to lighten the cut or deepen the cut. A real heavy cut is going to be a deeper sound. The more moderate or the lighter the plane cut gets, the more of that kind of wispy snicking noise that you get. All up to the really fine cut, kind of whispers across the board. Every plane is gonna make a slightly different sound. And as you adjust the depth on that plane, you'll be able to get a feel for almost how thick of a shaving it's taking. Moreover, if you listen closely to the sound, you'll be able to hear trouble spots on the board. Spots where maybe the grain switches back and you hear a little bit of tearing. The key is to just keep listening to the sounds of your planes. You get very attuned to what they sound like with the different types of cut you can take. And when that sound changes, whether in mid pass or one pass to the next, you know that something has changed and potentially you're changing the shape of the edge or making the shape of your edge different than what you're intending. Taking a straight edge and just running it over a board will tell you a lot just by the feel of the straight edge. I can certainly come down here and sight along the straight edge and look for light peeking through, but I also can just take two hands on the straight edge and run it kind of side to side across the board. And I can feel as the straight edge drags or as the straight edge slides smoothly over the surface, in this case it's sliding really smoothly over the surface, that this board is flat. If you try to rotate it or pivot it, if it's high in the middle, it's going to rotate very freely. If it's low in the middle, the sides are going to drag and you're going to feel that. You can move your hands and position things around and you can feel that, that drag as you move the straight edge across. 
and you can really feel where the low spots are, where there is no drag, where it's not touching. I can do the same thing running down the board across its width, and I can feel that I'm nice and flat. Same thing from corner to corner, and feel whether I've got low spots in the middle. I think I've actually got a little bit of a high spot right here because I can feel very little drag in the middle. And as soon as I kind of rotate down, that drag returns. So there's a little bit of a high spot right here. And I don't have to get down and sight along anything. I'm just telling by the amount of drag on the straight edge. It's all about the feel. Another very tactile thing when you're actually pairing is the chisel will pare away the, the easier material. And it gets harder when it runs into either a bigger chunk or say the bottom of this mortise and you'll be able to feel that I'm exactly where I need to be the right depth but also in something like a dovetail like this I can place my fingers around the chisel and essentially with this finger press it up against the wall so I'm angled on this dovetail and I can feel it sliding along that angled wall and that's my indication that I am pairing in the line that I want to be. I'm not changing the angle of this dovetail. And you know as you can see as I'm looking down over into this angle I can't see what I'm doing. It's all about the feel against that wall. When I'm getting ready to finish my sense of touch is the most important thing I've got in the shop. I can feel the board and feel for any roughness or possibly plain tracks or I can even feel if there's a little area slightly out of flat and it allows me to come in and just spot plane in those rough spots. Feeling for the vibration in a plane or spoke shave will tell you first of all if you're working with the grain or against the grain but it'll also tell you if your blade is getting dull that excess chatter or vibration is usually an indication that it's time to sharpen a blade. The same thing applies in spoke shaves and planes, but what I find is the spoke shave with its even shorter wheelbase really telegraphs that vibration a lot more because you have this really narrow sole that it sits on. And especially when you're working in a spoke shave on a curved object where the grain changes, you can feel very quickly if I'm working against the grain. I know that the grain is almost parallel to the surface here. The more I come down here, the more I'm going to be working against the grain. And I have to be very careful and really feel with my fingertips as I shave this down. The minute I start to feel more vibration is an indication that I'm moving into the area where I'm going to start working against the grain. I'm going to have to switch from a pull stroke to a push stroke. This is why in working with a spoke shave or in working with a plane, it's very much a fingertip tool. Grabbing it in your fists like this, you lose some of that feel, some of that touch. If I can work with my fingertips, just the thumbs pressing over the blade. I've got a much more delicate grasp and I can feel that slightest bit of vibration a lot more readily. Now as I work down here, while this surface is still rough, I'm getting a lot of vibration. You can hear that probably. That's because I'm now working against the grain. If I change to a push stroke, you can hear but I can also feel how the stroke the shave has gotten smoother. There's not nearly as much vibration. It also can tell you sometimes when going straight on and when skewing is a better idea. Paying close attention to the resistance while you're boring is another instance of using that sense of touch. When the resistance gets much easier, it's a sign that the lead screw is poked through the bottom and it's time to flip it over.
And when you're drilling through from both sides, you can prevent a lot of blowout. And it's just a matter of paying attention to the feel of that resistance and the feel of that lead screw as it pokes through. When it comes to shaping and fairing curves, don't underestimate your sense of touch. Your fingers can feel the difference between a thousandth of an inch and you can very easily feel if this curve is shaped the way you want it or if you've got little bumps in certain places. And then you can come back and shape those away. When you're sawing at a bench hook, you can actually use the reflection of your saw and the wood to tell if you're sawing square across the board and plumb, perfectly vertical. Essentially, if you see the line of your board continuing off in a straight line in the reflection, you know you are intersecting the board 90 degrees to it. Likewise, if the angle of the board goes up or down in the reflection, you're out of plumb. But if it goes straight across, you're perfectly square up and down. Paying close attention to the shape of the shaving as it comes out of the plane will tell you a lot about what shape you're leaving the edge. As I work my joiner plane across the board, I'm looking to have a shaving coming out right in the center of the mouth. I'm also looking to see that the shaving is the full width of the board. If that starts to deviate, say if I put too much weight on one side, you can see now the shaving's coming out and it's just, it's not nearly the full length of the board. And I am unconsciously adding uh, a chamfer or a bevel to this. You can use this shape of the shaving to correct it and kind of bring it back into a square edge. Having an understanding of all of these different senses will help you answer probably the question I get 90% of the time. How do I know when my tools need to be sharpened? Think about the sound of a dull chisel. Think about the sound of a sharp chisel. Think about how the surface of the wood looks when it's been planed or paired with a sharp tool as compared to a slightly dull tool. Think about the perceived effort of using, say, a travisher or a spoke shave that's freshly sharpened versus one that's not quite sharp enough. The sound and the effort of a dulling saw as compared to one that's perfectly sharp. You see, we become conditioned over time to work with duller and duller tools. We forget how easy it was with that freshly sharpened jack plane or that freshly sharpened travisher or that freshly sharpened saw. It gets harder and harder progressively over time. If you are more in tune with those senses, with the sounds and the feeling of sharp tools versus dull tools, and also understand that when those cuts start to go out of plumb uh, or out of square, or you're struggling to stay towards a line, it's probably an indication that your tools are getting duller. Not necessarily dull, but duller than what is optimally sharp. Understanding these senses will help you know when it's time to resharpen those tools. So take some time to become in tune with your hand tool sense. And don't forget the other sense, taste. If you taste blood, that's a sign that your tools are sharp enough. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.